Um, with Jordan Nesbitt now on campus, you know, when do you expect him to actually get his first practice in? And is there any chance that we actually see him suit up in a game this season? Well, he has to quarantine now just for a couple of days. He's getting COVID tests to make sure everything is good. Once his COVID tests are over, then he'll be back, I'm sure, next week if everything goes well. As far as playing during the season, we did not have plans for him to play during the season. That could change at any time. Uh, we just don't know about that yet. Terry? What's up, Coach? What's going on, Terry? Hey, man, this is the first time you're playing this Wichita State team and this coach. Do you pretty much just focus on your team or what they're doing and try to get your, your team where they need to be? Well, you want to focus on your team, you know, 95% and 5% on the other team. They got a couple plays that they're going to run, but the personnel is what you need to know the most. And right now, Al Tariq Gilbert and Travis Etienne, those two guys are really playing great basketball. The team is playing inspired basketball because obviously of the – the events that have happened over the last year with that team. And everybody's locked in and focused. They're playing good basketball. So for us, we have to worry about ourselves because we consistently see the same mistakes from ourselves. Turn the ball over, not understanding game plan at the right time and personnel. So we really have to take, take care of ourselves. Jason? Hey, Penny, how did the, um, how did the Nesbitt deal come together? Has it been in the works for, the, for a while? And um, is it if he doesn't, if he's not able, you know, if you guys don't play him, uh, I would assume you consider it worth it to have him on campus, even even if he doesn't play this year. Yeah, he was pretty much done at the prep school that he was at, and he was just kind of around town, really not doing much. He had already graduated, so it was a good idea from his father, and uh, and I talked about it and just said, you know, maybe it's time for him to come to come to school. So if he wanted to come to school. He's here now. It's going to be good for him to get get around uh, the campus to get this half of a year in to see what it's like, the, the style, the energy, our game plans, hear the verbiage and the language, get, get to know the teammates. And uh, if that comes to a point where he's going to feel comfortable enough to say, you know, I, I want to play, or if we say, hey, we need you, we you see you're looking good, you've caught on everything, then maybe we'll get to that point then. If he does play, um, what type of role do you see him playing I think we'll, that'll, that'll be judged from his play when he starts practicing with us just to see where his level is and what's going on and his understanding. He might could play some point. He probably could play some two. We don't know yet. Terry? Hey, any update on Damien and any other injuries or health relate, relating to the team? Damien has practiced the last couple of days. Uh, just precautionary reasons in Tulsa with him because the health is, is, is definitely number one for our guys. Not to, you know, force him out there, especially with concussion stuff. Have to be really careful. But now he's been practicing. Danielle? Halo was in here talking about how, you know, you guys need to speed things up, get more shots than you put up uh, on Sunday in, in Tulsa. How do you find that balance between playing fast and limiting mistakes? And is there a game this season where you feel like you guys have hit that sweet spot? You know, that is a good question, Daniel. It's, it's really tough because the guys have shown that when we play fast, they don't make the right decisions. We do need to play fast, but they have to not try to make the home run play. And I, don't, I haven't seen one game this year where we've actually done it to the best of our ability. If, if we could say anything, maybe the St. Mary's game, the first game of the year, every, all the cylinder, everything was hitting on all cylinders. Boogie was shooting the ball well. Guys were fast breaking, and we, we played pretty well. But other than that, I can't remember another game where we were just – getting out and getting after it. And that little stretch against South Florida, when we made the comeback, we did it then. But besides that, we just haven't done it well. Is that something that you think is because of the, the youth of this team? Or is it because you've kind of changed what you've been doing on the offensive side of the ball? I think it's just, you know, the youth, they're risk takers at the wrong time. Sometimes you just can't, you can't make the home run play every time. You just got to make the simple play that's right in front of you. And guys are just trying to do way too much. Sometimes it's in, in good spirits to try to get a ball to somebody that hadn't touched the ball in a while or that they think it's open, but it's just not smart a lot of the times. And we just have to be smarter. Jason? Kind of along those same lines about uh, taking risks and being smarter, is there anything that maybe you've considered um, doing differently, whether it's behind the scenes or uh, in front of the scenes to discourage their 
um, the, you know, the, the turnovers, the, uh, the lack of ball security, um, anything along those lines? We run for turnovers in practice, but that obviously isn't going to – we don't want to stop them from taking chances because some chances are worth taking and some aren't. It's just – it's a fine line. You want your guys to stay confident and not see a play and not make it. But guys know now at this, at this stage of their careers what's good and what's not good. But we do try to run and make it – you know, put it on their minds that it's not necessary to make certain passes – at certain times of the game, especially when you're looking at time and score. We're up six minutes to go on the game, six-point lead. You want to set that up and get into some offense. If you're in the first half of the game, you feel like you can get it one or two plays and it doesn't work, or if it does work, fine. But when it gets to winning time, becomes a winning time, you have to you have to be smarter. Clayton? Hey, Coach, just to clarify with Jordan, uh, the, the contact tracing, is that is that just entry testing to then be able to be with the team, or is that uh, he, like, being in contact tracing because of exposure? No, that's just him coming in from St. Okay. Louis and being a part of the protocol of just getting tested first to see if he has had COVID or been a part of anyone who's been around him that has had COVID. That would be for anybody that's coming into the fold because we are in a, in a bubble. Okay. Um, and then just to, to follow up, I mean, the benefit of coming in a semester early, you know, now you've seen so many, you know, freshmen here, um, you know, how much more of a benefit do you think that will be to his development for his college career? Huge, it's huge, because he gets a chance to see it. It's a free year for him. He gets a chance to see it, practice, be around it. Like I said, hear all the verbiage, watch film, see what our schemes are, see what our offensive sets look like and get used to it. So that's a, that's a big, big plus. Terry? Hey, Coach, what positive came out of the Tulsa game? I know a lot of people look at all the negative that may have came with it, but what positive came from that game, and how is the confidence level of your players? Well, the positive is we out-rebounded them by 12. You know, they usually do a good job of rebounding. We out-rebounded them by 12. We let them in, in a lot of statistical categories, but we just lost the turnover. They only We only turned them over 14 times. They turned us over 21 times. So the positive out of it is we got to keep rebounding the same way, and, you know, keep that going. The negatives, obviously, you didn't ask about the negatives, but the 21 turnovers and not shooting the ball well from three-point three line when you're wide open. Jason? Do you uh, anticipate any other um, uh, early enrollees? I guess that is something we should have asked. No, I, I, I didn't really anticipate Jordan. That was a surprise. So I'm on – say no, but no one else has said anything about it, but I think Jordan might be the only one. And is that something that you, uh, I guess, depending on how this one works out, is that something that you might, you know, might be kind of on the, uh, in your mind moving forward with recruiting? Like if this, if this pays off and it works out well, do you think that, you know, it's an avenue you might want to explore in the future? I think, yeah, I think it is. And I think it's something that the parents have to talk about with the kid. You get into a situation where a kid has already graduated, he's at a prep school, or he, he doesn't have to be at home, and he could get a head start, then I think that's a good idea, for sure. You can come in and practice and, and be a part of it. And then last thing for me, based on Malcolm's performance against Tulsa, is that going to, you know, cause any sort of um, shift in how – how uh, he's deployed and how others are, you know, how that might affect others going forward? Yeah, for sure. I mean, he, if he continues to play like that, he's going to be on the floor. Everybody else has to step up to the level. If he can step up to that level, Musa has to step up to that level. Lance Thomas has to step up to the level. And DeAndre Williams has to step up to that level. We want our bigs all fighting, making my job really hard to try to find out who, who's going to be put in the game. We're not showing favoritism over here. So if a guy's playing like that, it's going to be on the floor. And he can only play so many minutes at a high level. Then he comes out of the game. Then the next big needs to come in and do the same thing. Danielle, last question. I want to go back to when we were talking about, you know, deciding which risks to take. How much of that when it's happening in the moment um, do you put on each individual guy? And how much of that is, you know, maybe a, the point guard who's on the floor at the time or someone else who you think of as a leader? I guess, like, whose responsibility – do you think it is to, to make sure that those correct decisions are happening? Well, you can put it on the point guard, but then, you know, we're an equal opportunity team. Whoever gets the rebound can take the ball up. 
we don't force anybody to get the ball to the point guard. So the flip side of that is so many guys have the opportunity to touch the ball. And maybe that's my mistake because I want to play free and I want to run. It makes us quicker. We have one of the fastest paces in the country because of that reason. We don't want to have to just get it to the point guard. And guys just have to, you know, take care of their responsibility on the highest level. And they're not doing it. They're just being very nonchalant and just not understanding and thinking through things. And everybody has to have that responsibility. And if you've never been on this level to understand that the path that you think that would, might go through might not because the guy's arms are longer, the guys are more athletic and faster, then you got to start recognizing that. And we're putting more emphasis on it in practice about what's there and what's not there. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.